Hi, everybody. Uh, it's Joel Sharpton, and I wanted to share with you the presentation that I gave at PodFest about a week ago now or so uh, in Orlando. I know a lot of you probably have the video, and so you're going to have this presentation, but for those of you that didn't get to go or didn't uh, buy the, the digital package, I wanted to share the information with you in a slightly different format. So uh, let's get into it. We're going to go through this whole uh, keynote here. So I had a really good time presenting. I had uh, really good attendance for the presentation, and uh, it wasn't a keynote. It was a session uh, at PodFest, but um, I, I had a great time doing it, and uh, I'm excited for my next opportunity to speak. I'm excited to share this info with you today if you haven't heard it before. Um, so we talked about ACX.com and Audible for podcasters, and I said you don't need to be scared about doing audiobooks because audiobooks are just podcasts without an RSS feed, right? Uh, so I am Joel Sharpton. For those of you who don't know me, if you're watching this video, though, how did you find me if you don't know me? Um, I am the owner and chief editing officer for Pro Podcasting Services, and I'm also the host of Always Listening uh, Podcast Reviews from Josh and Joel. So let's discuss what we're really talking about in this presentation. The global audiobook industry was evaluated at $2.8 billion in 2015. And it's growing, too. 43,000 new audiobooks were released in 2015. There's actually been some recent numbers for 2016. I haven't updated my presentation yet, but those just came out. That 43,000 is up from 36,000 in 2014 and up from just over 20,000 in 2013. So this is a growing industry. The top 20 publishers combined for more than 3.88 million audiobook downloads sold in 2015. And you might say, well, but that's nothing compared to ebooks. It's exactly the opposite. As a matter of fact, the 3.88 million audiobooks is much higher than the 2.47 million ebook downloads in that same time period. So this is a huge industry that we're talking about. Why should you listen to me as I talk to you about this industry? Uh, I came from the terrestrial radio uh, business. I've been in radio for about 14 years now, and I've been podcasting now since 2012. I started listening to podcasts in 2007 uh, when I got my first iPhone and was making a commute about an hour and 15 minutes both ways across the city of New Orleans, um, or, or from one side of the city to the other, I should say, uh, right after Katrina. I was working down there, and um, that's when I got into podcasting. I started podcasting myself in 2012 with a silly little comedy show. Since then, I've launched a second show, Always Listening, and we have now reviewed more than 100 podcasts. We're 108, I think, and counting as of this recording. I'm a podcast editor, producer, and a vocal artist as well, uh, and I've been working with ACX and Audible as a narrator since uh, the early part of 2015. So how did I find this? Uh, some of you may know Wayne Henderson. He is a great podcaster and a voice artist in his own right. Like me, he comes from the radio industry. And he is the host of, among other things, the Voice Over Journey podcast. This is a great show. And in March 2015, um, there was an episode of this show where he interviewed another voice artist that had been doing ACX narration. And I thought, this is amazing. I went immediately home and created my ACX.com account that day. I booked my first narration, I think, within a week. And within a month or so after that March date, I had my first book in stores already about May of 2015. That summer, I met Wayne at Podcast Movement in Fort Worth, and I got to shake his hand and say thank you. And especially I wanted to say thank you for introducing me to ACX. And I said, so how is your audiobook journey going? How many books have you done? And he said, none so if you tweet about this presentation, if you share this with anybody, use hashtag where's Wayne's book because I want to know where Wayne Henderson's book is. We're two years later, by the way, and Wayne still doesn't have a book out that I'm aware of. So Wayne, you got to get to narrating, sir. Here's why audiobooks might not be right for you. And one of the reasons, one of these reasons is probably why Wayne hasn't gotten to it yet as well. They're very time consuming to record and produce an audiobook. Think about it. The, the nature of a book is hours long. The narration is going to be that same way too. And to edit takes many hours on top of that. So they're time consuming. And because of that time consuming nature, you put a lot of hours into it. Uh, you sell them slowly over time. They've got a slow ROI or return on investment. It's a crowded market too. Remember we said 43,000 audiobooks released in 2015 alone. So this is a big, big market, very crowded. Perhaps you have another opportunity that keeps you from pursuing this one. 
Um, that's what's happened for me a little bit. I've only got seven audiobooks in stores, and the reason is because other parts of my business, the consulting, the coaching, the editing, and the production side have really picked up and uh, sort of crowded out narration. So any of these reasons might slow your entry into audiobooks. Here's why I think audiobooks are worth your while anyway. First and foremost, they build your brand. We as podcasters, I heard great advice several years ago from Daniel J. Lewis, and he said, don't think of yourself as a podcaster. Think of yourself as a content creator. Our current medium is podcasting. You know, I know a lot of people in social media or through social media that when I first met them, they would tell you that they were a blabber. You guys remember blab.fm, right? Okay, so these these mediums sometimes can go away. I don't believe podcasting is going away anytime soon, but don't think of yourself as a podcaster. Think of yourself as a content creator. Here's a way to extend and build your brand. Supplement your income. Frankly, it is neat getting a check for work that you didn't do this month. You know, this is something that I have experienced now through narration and through audiobook sales. You've got a book in the Audible store in, you know, acx.com, in amazon.com, in the iTunes store. That book is selling, and every month they send you a little check. My father-in-law calls that mailbox money. Now, that term makes me feel a little slimy. It's a little, you know, multi-level marketing, but it's tr- it is good to get money in your mailbox. So you can supplement your income with audiobooks. You can share your own books. If you've already created eBooks, why not put those in front of your audience in an audio format since, especially if you're in uh, this presentation, you're probably a podcaster or a podcast industry adjacent already. So why not share it in a uh, medium that your audience is already familiar with and wanting? Stay Take your claim in three major search engines. This is a big one that I don't think enough people think about. We talk about search engine optimization and we think about Google. We think about the iTunes search, right? Well, iTunes is not just for podcasts. It's a store too. And when you create an audiobook, when you go through ACX, you are in the Amazon.com store. You are in the iTunes store. You are in the Audible store. That's three major search engines that your name, your brand, your book can now be found in. Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. Very important. How do you get paid? Let's talk about money when you work through ACX.com. Per finished hour, PFH and RS are revenue share. Those are the two acronyms that you need to know about. Um, any of these agreements, by the way, when you make it with ACX, that you're not, there's not a lot of negotiation for an independent uh, content creator or an independent narrator. It's a seven-year term of agreement. So when you sign the contract, you're going to be locked into this thing for seven years. For narrators, you either agree to per finished hour rate. That means you create the book and then you make an hourly rate, standard sort of union rate for narration only, not production, is $225 per finished hour. Most of you, when you start, if you're not a SAG member, you're not going to be able to get $225 per hour, uh, per finished hour, but that's something to think about as you begin to set your rates and look for what slot you fit in. Uh, Or instead of per finished hour rate, you can take a revenue split, which means that 20% of every sale through iTunes, Audible, or Amazon is going to go straight into your account. 20% of each sale. So 20% goes to you, 20% to the author, and 60% to the companies involved, Amazon, Audible, etc. For rights holders, you're going to choose either an exclusive deal, which means you distribute through ACX and they put it on to Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, and that's it. Or a non-exclusive deal, which means they will distribute it to those three places. You can also distribute it anywhere else you like. And that changes your split. If you choose an exclusive deal, you can get a 40% royalty if you do per finished hour with your narrator or if you narrate it yourself. Or a 20% split with the narrator. So you get 20%, the narrator gets 20%, the companies will take the rest. If it's a non-exclusive deal, you have to choose per finished hour for your narrator and pay them up front. Or you have to narrate it yourself and you will only get 25% royalty. And you must, uh, as I said, pay the narrator up front. Why would you choose that then if you take such a big cut? You take a 15% cut in in royalty rate there to do the non-exclusive deal. Here's the one thing that I would say. If you have already developed an audience and you know or you feel very likely that your audience is going to buy this book, why not choose the non-exclusive agreement and sell a version of the audiobook, an ebook in a package, a combo package directly to your audience through your website 
in a way that you can capture more or all of the funds instead of sharing those funds with Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. For the customers that Amazon, Audible, and iTunes bring to you that, that wouldn't have found you otherwise, excellent. You'll get a 25% cut of them, and the massive stores will take their big chunk for, uh, for bringing you that customer and hosting your book. But if you already have an audience, I think that is a good um, avenue to take as a rights holder when you're thinking about publishing your book. A podcaster pitching their ebook is like a movie star pitching their one man mime show. This is what I think about podcasters who write an ebook in their industry or their niche and then they only offer it in ebook format or only in published book format without ever creating the audiobook. Why are you doing that? You uh, you found your audience and your audience found you through podcasting, through being in their ears. Why not bring your book to their ears as well? All right. How do you go about doing this? Well, we can do it right now. You need to create your ACX profile. That's the first step. You go to acx.com, and you're going to use your amazon.com account credentials. So you don't need to even create a new account, really. You go to sign up, and then they're going to ask for your Amazon username and password. You log in using that, and then you're going to have to choose whether you're an author, a publisher, or a narrator. I will say this. If you primarily expect to use ACX to expose your own work, you've written several ebooks. maybe down the road you'll do some narration, but what you want to do right now is get your own ebooks up, whether through your voice or another narrators, choose the publisher option then or the author option because you cannot, from a narrator account, upload a book for sale for yourself. So if you're going to be a publisher and an author and you're also going to want to narrate other people's accounts, you're going to need two separate accounts through ACX to do that. And they're fine with that. That's not against the terms of service. You just have to create those two separate accounts in that way. What information do they need? They need your social security number and or your EIN number if you're a sole proprietorship like me, for instance. They need your bank account and your routing number so that they can send you your checks. Uh, they need demos for your narrators. If you are going to be a narrator, you need to upload a demo. I'm going to get back to that in just a second. And then they need your book listing if you're a publisher or an author. And he here I will say, if you have written an ebook or a, a, a regular published you know, paperback or hardback book, you need to claim that through Amazon to use it on ACX.com to say, this is my book and I want to turn it into audiobook format. So it needs to be in the Amazon store or the Kindle store already. Uh, in order to be eligible, so to speak, for the ACX audiobook program. That's it. That's all the information you need. And if you put in that information, then your profile is up and running and you can, can get going. Let's talk quickly about demos. I've heard a lot of you know, would-be narrators or first-time narrators say to me, Joel, what do I put up for a demo? I've never done an audiobook before. There are many books on your shelves, though, and you are more than capable of reading them. Uh, this is one of those things. It is, I think, technically against copyright, but you know, I, I put up for my first demo was a version of me reading about five minutes of The Princess Bride because that's what I had handy. It's a book I enjoy. It's a book I know well. So think, find something that is in the voice, in the tone, in the genre of a book that you think you would be good to read as a narrator, and then go with it. Put put up the demo and get to submitting for auditions. The real way you're going to get your foot in the door on those first couple of jobs is through auditions anyway. It's not going to be through your demos. By the time people start trolling your profile and finding you through your demo work, it's going to be very likely that you already have some work to put up for your demos properly. I will say this, once you have some books, replace those old demos <laughs> by all means. Put up actual work of you, um, you know, that you have done through ACX or otherwise through narrators once you have that. All right, let's talk about the specifics, the nuts, the bolts, the bites. Um, I will just say this. Either you understand the things on this slide, or they'll make sense to you, or you're already hiring this out for your podcast, and you'll very likely hire it out for your audiobook as well. You need to make sure that your files are at least 192 kilobits per second, at least that high. They can be up to 320 if you want to. They need to be MP3s. They need to be constant bit rate or CBR, and they need to be 44.1 kilohertz. These are all pretty standard. That's a little bit higher than sort of the standard uh, bit rates for podcasting generally, but it is a shame, and I know some of you are already thinking, why can't we upload waves? ACX does not allow you to upload waves. It's something that I rail against constantly. It makes me mad about ACX, but it is true. They require MP3s. Guess what they do with them when they get them? They convert them immediately to waves. It 
it drives me bonkers. But this is what they need. You want them to be, we need um, levels to be consistent and constant, just like in podcasting too. You want to make sure that you are between 23 decibels and 18 decibels as far as your peaks uh, with three decibel peaks and a max of 60 decibel noise floor. So basically just like podcasting, our standards in podcasting for loudness um, are, are a little higher than that. I think we go up to 16 decibels normally for podcasting. This is 23 to 18. That's where your range needs to be. And the peaks can't be any higher than three decibels. All the files have to be under 120 minutes long and each file can only contain one chapter or section. So you got chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. That's three separate files that you're going to upload to ACX. Let's say for some reason, though, you have a chapter in your book or a section in your book that is more than two hours long. You have to divide that up into multiple parts, into separate files. Every single file needs to have between a half a second and one second of room tone at the beginning and one and a half and five seconds of room tone at the end of each file. As an editor, let me tell you that this is a good idea even for your podcasting files too. If you're sending your work off to somebody else or even if you're editing it yourself, when you first open the mic, leave a few seconds or a little room there at the beginning to hear the room. Leave a few seconds at the end as well. And what that allows you to do is you can capture the noise and remove as much of it as possible. But also ACX requires that for separation of the files. They want the listener to understand fully that there is a separate section about to begin. And then all of your files have have to be consistent in this way too. They've all got to be mono or they all have to be stereo. You can do it either way. They all just have to be one or the other. No mixing and matching. So again, if you're going to hashtag this presentation or share it out at all on your social media, hashtag Where's Wayne's Book. And I want you to remember, don't be like Wayne. Follow up on this information and, and get it done. Get yourself in the store. Maybe you're listening to this presentation and you say, hey, that sounds great, but I don't want to do it. I don't want to learn how to do any of this. And I, I would like my book in the store, uh, but I am not interested in the nuts and bolts and bits and bytes. Um, well, then you can hire it out. There is a thriving ACX community on Facebook with hundreds of narrators and producers and editors and even full service companies to get your book in the store. Um, Pro Podcasting Services has worked with authors like Dan Miller and Ray Wood and more. And we would be very excited to work with you as well. Uh, we've got audiobook services available on my site. Go to propodcastingservices.com and check them out there. And uh, thanks for your attention. When I was live, I gave some time at the end. I was running a little late, but I did have a little time for questions and answers. If you have any questions about acx.com, audible or audiobooks for podcasters, I would love to answer them. You can ask them right below this video. You can message me, joel at propodcastingservices.com, or you can find me on my site and contact me through there. Also, I'm on Twitter at The Rogue's Life. Thanks for listening. And thanks to Chris Kremitzos, Katie Kremitzos, and John Dennis, the whole crew behind PodFest 2017. I had a blast in Orlando. Can't wait to go back next year. Next year's dates, by the way, if you missed it, PodFest in Orlando, February 8th through the 10th. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I mean, you know, there are worse places to be than Florida in February. Thanks again. This is Joel Sharpton from propodcastingservices.com and always listening podcast reviews.